the fine tuning argument. It's such a bad argument for God because it, it, it looks like you're saying God had to fine tune this number to one part in 120 so that his beautiful creation could exist. But my point is, God could have made it zero, which is the sensible value, and we can exist and everything would be better. So God's a pretty crummy arch- architect. If, if He chose this ridiculous value mm-hmm. when, it, when zero would have made everyone happier and we would all be living longer and, and there'd be a lot more life in the universe. So the argument that that, that that ridiculous value points to an intelligent designer is ridiculous. It points to a pretty unintelligent designer, like yeah. most arguments by intelligent design. Mm-hmm. So, I, I mean, this also connects to Alan Guth and Andre Lindy, who you mentioned, and inflation, and also to, to string theory. And one of the, I think, arguments for string theory that I didn't mention yet is it purports in some fashion to account for fine tuning because it arise our, our physics arises out of a fundamental theory whereas the standard particle model I mean has these 17 or so free parameters that have to be settled by experiment but <laughs> by your expression I can tell that well, that's the but that's the biggest failure of string theory perhaps of all the failures of string theory and there are many is that string theory hasn't explained the one thing the one thing that you think a quantum theory of gravity would explain, which is why the energy of empty space is what it is, it's given us no insight into that whatsoever. Generally, string theories predict a value which is vastly different than what we see. It's been the biggest failure of string theory. So to argue that somehow it counts for fine-tuning is the exact opposite. String theory has nothing to say about it except to potentially give a, a playing field which allows the anthropic principle. Because string theory ostensibly has many possible vacua, we don't know for sure, but appears to have many possible ground states, potentially, you know, huge, infinite almost, but maybe not infinite, but almost. It it gives you the platform for saying, well, all sorts of different universes could exist, and the only ones that we'd be living in would look like the ones we live in. So, yeah, to that's, but that we don't need string theory for that, but it gives you, I mean, the, the, Multiverse of inflation is much more well motivated than the multiverse of string theory. Mm. So, just to make sure that I'm not making a mistake here, there are plenty of string theorists who do think that string theory accounts for um, the fine tuning problem. This isn't just something that I'm manufacturing, right? What, what, you mean for the value of the energy of empty space being so small? No, for the for the fact that there are like ten to the five hundred ground states of the string, and each one might correspond to a different universe in this multiverse, and yeah, one yeah. would thus be ours. Yeah, well, that's not string theory. That's the anthropic principle. That's saying that yeah, we can't predict anything, but if anything's possible, then it's not surprising that we exist. Yeah, if that's an explanation. But that comes out of string theory, at, at least, well, or it's it, related to string it, theory in this sense. The anthropic playing field, the string landscape gives a, a a fundament it does give a motivation for the anthropic principle but it's not the only one and i think it's not the best motivated one mm-hmm. and you do you think the best motivated one is the inflationary one that you were absolutely just... absolutely okay. because inflation relies on physics we understand and it's almost inevitable it's almost inevitable that our universe is part of an, uh, an inflating multiverse it's hard to get away from it So this is something that you uh, agree with. We found something that's contentious that you agree with. And and we can't directly test whether or not there... But I think if you you think about inflation, it's hard to imagine an inflationary model that that isn't eternal and and that does therefore uh, uh, produce a multiverse. Now, that doesn't always imply that the laws of physics are different in every in every pocket universe, as, as, as Alan Guth would call it, uh, but it allows that possibility. Hmm. I think it's definitely contentious, maybe uh, uh, not in the cosmological circles, but that we live in a multiverse of this sort. Where's the contentious? I think most physicists think it's the most likely possibility. Most physicists okay. who thought about it, I think most physicists, who, most theoretical physicists who thought about it and know anything about inflation think that's probably the most likely possibility. And so one of the problems that you identified... Well, that's good or bad. We may all be wrong, but I think it's it's. It, I think you'd find a con- more consensus than you might think. 
One of the problems that you identified with string theory is that there aren't uh, currently technologically feasible experimental methods to directly test or observe strings. But by that same token, we can't directly observe these other multiverses. So what is the, is it theoretical or experimental data that leads you to believe though you could be wrong in their existence? Oh, uh, look, I have proposed a way to, to, to find out if the multi other, well, in, in other inflationary multiverses exist. Hmm. How's um, that? And, and, uh, it will, it will, it will, it will indirectly give strong evidence they exist, just like Einstein's pr prediction of the, of Brownian motion gave great indirect evidence that atoms exist. Couldn't see them directly, but, but it, everything about the, the, the observations was consistent and strongly compellingly suggest atoms were real and not a mathematical icing, which in 1905 was a, a big issue. A lot of chemists thought math atoms are also just a mathematical artifice. Um, anyway, so the idea is that, is that if um, if we observed gravitational waves from inflation, then two things, by the way, as I've shown with my with with Frank Wilczek, in fact, but as we showed, it tells us that gravity is a quantum theory. There will be no gravitational waves from inflation if gravity isn't a quantum theory, you know, and it's up for grabs. I mean. Other, many people like Atuf probably think that gravity isn't a quantum theory, that quantum mechanics is going to go out the window before general relativity. Um, so that would be fascinating. It would show that gravity is a quantum theory. But you see, if you could find those gravitational waves, then you could actually know, you could actually measure parameters of inflation, if you wish. And, and, and then you'd have a model. And in those parameters, you'd say, is this an inflationary model that results in a multiverse? And if you've tested that, I mean, this is an ideal situation, but if you do that, then you say, okay, well, that's the model we've tested, and that's what, that's what happened. And therefore, there must, even though we can't see it, there must be a multiverse. Hmm. This, so it's uh, indirect evidence, just, just like the indirect evidence of, of atoms, in my opinion. Yeah, this reminds me of, uh, getting back to where we started, Brian Keating's yeah. work, trying to detect gravitational waves through yeah of course he probably predicted them and he was they were trying to detect them and 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 looked like they had but they but they hadn't mm -hmm. well looked like they had but it's not clear that they it they couldn't we couldn't say they detected it you can't there say they dust. didn't it was a no, the noise is big enough that you couldn't yeah. tell it was a signal mm -hmm.